with the help of my lovely wife Anke and of um, all the nice friends in, in the music, uh, of, of all the musicians, I'm back here and uh, full of energy to work with everybody else on stage to give you a rendition of uh, Andy Kirk's 12 Clouds of Joy. Um, this band was called 12 Clouds of Joy even uh, when they had only eight people in the band. But uh, <laughs> they thought they would reach it. We only have 10 clouds of joy. And uh, you see them, our, uh, well, I, I will tell about him late, at, 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 at least, no, at, at last. <laughs> we have on the, uh, on the drum machine, uh, not a robot, but a wonderful person called Nick Ball. <clears throat> Phil Rutherford is one of the flaming tuba players. <clears throat> Martin Wheatley on uh, different guitars and banjos. <clears throat> Richard Axel on alto and clarinet. <laughs> Lars Funk on clarinet and tenor saxophone. <laughs> Two trumpets, Marlo Mazuri and Andy Sham. <laughs> and Christoph on trombone. <laughs> Andy Kirk was a band leader. He was born eight 1898, just two years before the century started, and he was a long liver. He died in 1992. I, I didn't know. Uh, so he must have a good health. And that might, may come, what I'm trying to do too, from playing the bass saxophone. <laughs> and he was a bass saxophonist and tuba player. And he stayed to these, uh, stick to these instruments all the time, even when he didn't play them. <laughs> so his band, which he started in uh, 1929 in Kansas City, this band uh, lasted till 1948. Um, this is another interesting story about this band. Well, why did it last so long? Because he had wonderful musicians in the band, and most of all, it is because of the pianist, Mary Lou Williams. Our Mary Lou Williams uh, is today Andrew Oliver. And she really got the difficult parts to play, and she wrote them for herself, you know. She made all the arrangements and she made such an impression <coughs> that on the first date they recorded, this was on November 7 to 8, 1929 in Kansas City, the real pianist, another girl, didn't show up. And Mary Lou Williams was, uh, she was um, married to the alto saxophone and baritone player of the band, John Williams. <clears throat> and she was a, what can you say, a, a reserve pianist. And so she, she, she had to sit in and she made <coughs> such a hit <laughs> that she, she always stayed at the piano at, on first chase, on first choice. So we start with these in, uh, early uh, recordings the, the mm, two from November 7 to 8, 1929, and this one is, the first one is called the Mess uh, Stump, or Mess A Stump, Mess A Stump. <laughs> Thank you. 
recording from two days later, November 29, and this one is called The Corky Stump. I don't know who was Corky, I mean, I think one of the musicians is there. <laughs> compositions we are playing now, except the last one, are compositions of Mary Lou Williams, one of the first ladies in jazz, and she stayed, and she, she stayed in jazz and went on playing with everybody um, till, the, till she died, I think, uh, 1981. Um, she was a child prodigy. She <laughs> learned to play piano from her mother and uh, never had a lessons or whatever. And she was playing at four, at the age of four, all day long and all no night long that it's told that the neighbors came along and uh, threw bricks at their house <laughs> uh, to stop her from, play from playing. Uh, this changed when she offered to play in the neighbor's house for all the neighbors, and she made a big success. She was uh, she was known as um, the little piano girl, in <laughs> and uh, in uh, when when we the, the things we just played, 1929, she was 19 years old, you know. Perfect, right. And there's another nice story about her. 
when she was 13, um, she went uh, to um, a, a local a local concert from Duke Ellington and his Washingtonians, and she joined in the band with 13. Can't imagine. And later in the night, Louis Armstrong showed up and kissed her and took her. No, it was yeah. <laughs> it was it was it was. It was told, she, he kissed her and told, uh, said, she's my little girl, you know, 1923 <laughs> in the night at 2 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> so, next uh, from her is a little slightly smaller band and a funny title called Froggy Bottom. in Kansas City from this band and they moved for the next recordings to Chicago and immediately, immediately the uh, style changed a little bit. They had a bigger band and uh, they recorded not only own compositions but uh, famous uh, popular tunes of the day but in very nice and strange arrangements 
by Mary Lou Williams. Next one is one of that. You know it. I'm pretty sure it's not the highlight of this festival, but a highlight, a highlight of every festival in France. It's called I Lost My Girl from Memphis. And we're going to have Spets as a perfect singer. <laughs> of a, a very famous blues. Nearly everybody played it. I think it's uh, written down by W.C. Handy. The Dallas Blues. But we don't hear any words except very strange it's, introduction. It's really, really difficult to work out what he's saying because it's, uh, he, he's mumbling. Yeah. He's mumbling. That's you can he's do it. I can mumble, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I know my place. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Yeah, thanks a lot. Uh, some more details about Mary Lou Williams. She went up, off in the 30s, uh, still playing with the band till I think uh, 1940 something, 46 or so. She was uh, playing and arranging with this band. It got more into swing and into swing, and she wrote wonderful arrangements. That once uh, Benny Goodman came along and said, wanted to her, wanted to have her as his principal arranger uh, exclusively, but she refused to do that. Um, so <clears throat> Mary Lou Williams uh, was uh, a freelance arranger then too. She arranged for Ellington, for Tommy Dorsey Orchestra, and everything else. Um, so she was a real. The real first famous, fantastic, and Im Im big, well, uh, woman who had a big impression on the development of jazz. So the next uh, is not her, is not from her, but it's uh, of course she always changed around. You you can feel it. That she changed around. It's very bluesy. It's very Kansas City style, which you hear from. Count Basie later, or Benny Morton before. And <clears throat> the next one is just uh, um, the thing I wanted to play these in these times very often, and I'm, I'm very glad we can play it here at least once. It should be played more often all over the world, and especially our two, if, if YouTube is listening now, uh, our, two, our two little Ukrainian girls we, we had in the summer here, they would like to join in singing. You rascal, you. <laughs> <laughs> a lot. Now another pop song again with wonderful spats on at vocal and this is uh, the, just the opposite of the song before. Yeah. <laughs> Klaus said to me, uh, well I said to Klaus, 
How do you want me to sing this one? Uh, because it's very stylized. The gentleman who sings it is a lovely singer. It's very stylized. And he said, just like the record. <laughs> <laughs> Sweden hot, there must be several numbers, uh, several compositions of what were called Sweden hot. But this is a Mary Lou Williams composition for only that band. Sweet and hot. <coughs> Thank you. 
nearly reaching the end with one other pop song from the time. And this is uh, about college uh, people, college people in the second year, right? Yeah. And you tell about what they should you tell us about they had a what dance they should happy. learn. What they should learn. Yeah, they, this is a, a dance called the sophomore. And, uh, if you do this, uh, life will be superb and uh, you'll have no worries. <laughs> Kirk with the two Andes. Andy one, Andy two. So please, if you're, if you're listening from above, this had happened. So, uh, just for the last bits, two last bits, we played two versions of the same song from 1929, and to show the development of the band, only seven years later. And I always, when I hear these differences, I think, what did I do seven years ago? Did I play <laughs> so completely different? It's incredible, isn't it? <laughs> so, it's cloudy. No time? Well, we have, it's short numbers. Uh, just the blues, cloudy. Uh, the bands were called the, the Twelve Clouds, so they played Cloudy. The first one is Blues, we played 
very fast, of course. And the next one is not a blues, it is a blues plus more. The first one is light clouds, the second one is dark clouds of the mid-thirties. You know, you can understand the political meaning. Thank you very much for listening. So, cloudy number one. Oh, 
so cloudy Why hear me while I say Is a kiss 